Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to AI ML Tech Lab, accelerating AI ML workflows on a composable cyber infrastructure. Uh, my name is Zheng Hua He. Um, I'm the instructor for today's short course. Um, this short course is sponsored by ACES um, and uh, HPRC, High Performance Research Computing, and uh, CCSR uh, Cyber Team Sweeter, and also is uh, access and support. So here I want to uh, emphasize that uh, this short course is uh, sponsored by and in part by the CSSN Community Engagement Program Travel Award. And uh, we uh, gratefully acknowledge their support in providing this community resource. So if you are interested in about the CSAP Travel Award Program, you can uh, check there, but the, the I think the deadline for uh, for this month probably uh, has been passed. So um, here's the structure of the AI ML Tech Lab, and uh, it has been divided into four lab sessions. The first lab session uh, is a Jupyter Lab. In this lab session, we will learn how to load the required modules and uh, activate the virtual environment and run Jupyter Lab on Camel HPRC ACES portal. In the second lab, uh, we will do some data exploration. We will go through some examples with the two popular Python libraries. The first one is called Pandas. It is for data manipulation, and the second uh, Python libraries, so the Matplotlib, we will use it for uh, data visualization for different plotting. The third lab section is uh, machine learning. In this lab session, we will use a uh, uh, secular library for linear regression, classification, and uh, clustering applications. Um, the fourth lab is deep learning. We will learn how to use PyTorch to build and train a simple image classification model with the deep neural networks. So this is uh, uh, the, the structure of this tech lab. If you have any questions, pl please let me know, or you can put your question in the chat. And uh, for today's lab, our main focus is that uh, let you guys uh, get our ACES cluster so you can explore the different resources on this computing cluster uh, by using some AI ML uh, workflows. So this is the Jupyter Lab. Uh, this is the interface of the Jupyter Lab. Uh, probably some of you guys have uh, uh, used a Jupyter Lab before, or some some of you guys don't. Uh, so on the left side panel, you can see a file browser and uh, there are some files here. If you double click on a, a file, it will open a tabbed view uh, in the main working area. Uh, we can open, for example, a Jupyter notebook. Uh, we can open a terminal, a console or other files as well. Um, so this is Jupyter. For today's, uh, so of course, we have some uh, uh, recommended resources. The first one is, uh, of course, our website. Uh, because we are using the ACES cluster hosted, hosted at uh, Texas c and High Performance Research Computing. So you can uh, look at the, our web page. Uh, can you guys still see my uh, screen? And I'm on the uh, web page of Texas c and High performance research computing. Okay, I see some some thumbs up. That's great. And uh, you can see actually you can check the cluster status here. And uh, ACES is the cluster we will be using today. And uh, you can see the nodes usage, course usage, and how many jobs on um, the clusters. So um, switch back and. Uh, the next is the ACES Quick, Quick Start Guide. If you click on the link, oh, uh, I forgot to mention that you guys can download the PowerPoint, the, the slides for today's short course on Time of HPRC training. Um, uh, let me 
the bar, the zoom. Uh, let me move the zoom bar to the bottom. Um, if you go to our website here, if you click on the training tab, you can see there is a courses option and you click on it. And if you scroll down, you will find today's show course here, AIML Tech Lab. And if you click on view details, the presentation slides has been posted. So you can click on PDF link and you can download it to your local computer. If you have any questions, you can let me know or put it in the chat. We have a teaching assistant in the chat to help you uh, with your questions. Um, let me go back to the ACS Quick Start Guide. So you can see we have ACS Quick Start Guide um, about the logging and uh, storage quotas and all, all sorts of things. And also you can use the user guide. Here you can learn about the hardware of ACES, the policies, how to access uh, ACES cluster and the computing environment. Um, here also we explicitly list the graph core IPUs and uh, members, but also we have other accelerators on ACES as well. So uh, we are in the process of adding more uh, accelerators and resources to this list. Next, uh, we today we are gonna um, access the ACES cluster through HPRC ACES portal. Um, I guess I have logged in here. Um, so let's start from, let me just close it. And then here, uh, if on our web page, you can see a uh, portal menu. If you click on the ACES portal menu, portal access, you will get to the ACES portal. I have logged in, so I'm directly in the in the ACES uh, open on demand portal. So um, I will give you guys one uh, one minute to log into the ACES portal. Um, let uh, let let let's continue. I guess uh, uh, we will do this uh, uh, shortly. You know, a few minutes. Next is about the access documentation. It's about the if you have any questions about the access registration or applying. For example, for today, I guess most of you guys have the have been added into our training allocation. So that's a very small and uh, short duration. Uh, training uh, allocation. If you want to continue to use our ACES cluster afterwards, you will have to apply uh, an allocation from ACCESS. We um, have several types of uh, allocations, so you can uh, choose one of them based on your situation. For example, you just want to explore, you can explore, uh, you can choose the explore allocation type. It, it has a, a relatively smaller um, smaller amount of uh, access credits. But if you want to do uh, large computations, you can, of course, uh, uh, apply for more. And also we have HPRC YouTube uh, channel. We have uh, uh, many short videos here and uh, introducing our uh, clusters, introducing, uh, for example, introduction to Linux, Slurm scheduler, and uh, uh, even Anaconda environments and uh, different things here. So if you guys are interested in here, you, uh, you are very welcome to subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, get notified about any new videos uh, we, posted, we post. And uh, uh, lastly, but, uh, lastly is about our um, help desk email. After the short course, if you still have some questions, you can send us an email and uh, uh, we will help you from there. So now let me introduce ACES cluster. And uh, ACES uh, is an uh, NSF funded project. ACES is, uh, stands for Accelerating Computing for Emerging Sciences. 
Our mission is to offer an accelerator testbed for numerical simulations and AI ML workloads. So we have uh, different types of accelerators on ACES. We have graphical IPUs. We have uh, NVIDIA H100, A30s, and as other accelerators that, uh, that can help you speed up your workflow. And also we provide consulting, technical guidance, and training to researchers. We have host we have hosted uh, several workshops, tutorials, and uh, short courses, of course, to, to train the researchers to use the resources on ACES cluster. We also collaborate on computational and data-enabled research. Uh, for example, we have collaborated with the Tech, Tech Advanced Computing Center, San Diego Supercomputing Center, University of Florida, to do some research work and, uh, and benchmarking. So here's a table about the accelerators on uh, ACES cluster. Uh, you can see we have a graph core IPUs 32. We have 16 uh, graph core classes IPU and assisting bow IPUs. Um, this is uh, uh, these IPUs are specific, specifically designed for AI ML workloads. So if you are working on AI, M AI ML workloads, and uh, we, I strongly, uh, I strongly encourage you to attend the short course this afternoon. We have a graph core expert to, uh, to teach the short course, so you you will get um, uh, some advice uh, on your uh, on your uh, AI ML workflows, I guess. And also, we have Intel FPGA, Viver FPGA, Nas Silicon Coprocessor, and you see Vector Engine. Intel Optane SSD. Uh, this can be addressed as memory with the Manverge uh, memory uh, machine. And uh, today we are going to use the NVIDIA H100 and A30 for today's short course. So uh, you guys have been put into a reservation. So when we launch the Jupyter Lab app, uh, you will be able to use the GPUs. And also we have Intel PVC uh, GPUs as well. So you can uh, choose uh, the type of uh, accelerators that you are interested in to speed up your workflow on ACES cluster. Okay, um, let's uh, start. Uh, uh, get, uh, let's first uh, get on the ACES cluster. As I said, this is the Tesla CNM High Performance Research Computing website. If you click on the portal tab, uh, you can see the ACES portal access here in the menu and you can click on it and the, this will open the ACES open on demand portal. So ACES portal is the web-based user interface for, uh, act, um, for ACES cluster. Okay, um, let, me, let me first go through it quickly and then we will do, the, do it step-by-step. Um, this will also direct you to the access website and uh, you will have to provide the identity provider. For an access user, uh, you can choose access CI exceed and, uh, and this will direct you to the CI logon. You, you will need to enter your access username and uh, password and click login. And uh, this will uh, bring you to the ACES open on demand portal. So on there, we will go to the ACES shell access. And uh, okay, let's um, access the ACES cluster from here. Um, I guess I can use a uh, inclinado window. I'll just do Tamil HPRC. You guys uh, can follow me and uh, the most important thing is to let you get on the ACES cluster and start using it. So please follow me. If you have any questions, you can put it in the chat. Uh, we we will be help. We will we can help you from there. So this is our website. Click on ACES portal. Hey Jinma. Yes. There is a question in chat about uh, okay. getting access to the materials. Uh, here the ACES. 
Sure. Okay, let me check the question. Yeah, Tech Labs and so using. Oh, yeah, you are using the SDSC cluster. Um, sure. Uh, I can share it with you. Uh, I can I can put it on GitHub later, so you can get clone the AI Tech Labs material there. Uh, I'm interested in using our ACS cluster because today our focus is on teaching you how to uh, how uh, explore our ACS cluster. I know you are using a different cluster. Um, the, if you are interested in using that, uh, uh, but I can, I can, of course, I can share the materials later to you as well. I think it's Shashi, Shashi Mishura. Um, and then if I click log on and I will need to provide my access username and access password. I think I see them here and I will click login. So this will, uh, there is a do push notification on my phone. So I will click on uh, approve. So now we are on the ACS open demand portal. So first thing first, we will need to copy the training materials to your personal scratch directory. Uh, I have all these open in other windows, so I, I will close it. Um, so now everybody should be on, uh, let me, and then we will, we will click on the ACES shell access. So you can see now I'm on ACES logging to node. This is a logging node for access cluster. Um, how many of you guys have been on this uh, here? You can see the prompt, the terminal prompt. So next is to, to copy the training materials for today. First, in your access shell terminal, you will need to navigate to your personal scratch directory. Uh, you can use this command, cd dollar sign, uh, capitalize the scratch, this environment for your environment variable for your scratch directory. Uh, the files for, the files for this course are located as uh, Scratch Training uh, AI Tech Labs. Uh, you can make a copy of your personal Scratch directory, cp-r, Scratch Training AI Tech Labs, or you can just put a dot if you are in the Scratch directory already, or you can just copy and paste the command into your terminal. Uh, you can download, the, of course, the PDF presentation into a local uh, computer, and then you can just directly copy this command. Um, and then enter this directory, your local copy, CD AI Tech Labs. Um, I will wait uh, a minute or two um, to, to let everyone copy the uh, training materials. After you finish copying the training materials, you can give me a thumbs up in the chat, uh, thumbs up so I know you have uh, successfully done that. Okay, um, next is to um, launch the Jupyter Lab. Uh, but uh, wait a second, we have created a, a one uh, Jupyter Lab app called a Jupyter Lab parentheses short course. So today we are gonna use the, that one. Let me go to my open on demand portal. And uh, if you click on the interactive apps, you can see we have a new uh, app here called Jupyter Lab Short Courses. If you click on this, this will bring uh, bring you to a form uh, for the short course. And uh, we will uh, fill in some information, for example, Anaconda. Uh, we have a environment created by Anaconda 3.2022.05. So here we will choose this module, Anaconda 3. 2022.05. And also we have created a virtual environment um, by Test CNM high performance research computing for this short course. Uh, the path to the uh, to the to the environment is here like uh, software SW HPRC SW Anaconda 3 
2022 Dolph, uh, 05 AI Dash Labs. So uh, you can actually directly copy the uh, path from your presentation slides. I have put the um, I have put the path there, so you can copy the path and uh, paste it in the uh, box. So this is our first option. I will introduce the second option a few later. Uh, here we use a, a shared environment created by Tamo HPRC for this short course specifically. So um, other fields we need to choose no type. Uh, we will choose the first available GPU because uh, our uh, GPUs are very busy. So I made a reservation and uh, and uh, for for us, we will choose the first available GPU. And the uh, number of GPUs today, we, we can only pro provide one. Um, you can choose one and a number of hours. I think three hours is enough. Number of cores, you can choose three. This is recommended value. Um, total memory, gigabyte, five gigabyte. I, uh, it's enough for today's short course. After that, um, we can click on launch or uh, for example, if you want to charge your account specifically, uh, this is optional. This will charge, if you do not provide any account information, it will charge you the default uh, account. But I think for today's uh, for training, I guess it's uh, from the training allocation. Uh, and then you can click on launch. Uh, I have done that. so. You can see I have a uh, Drupal lab already uh, running here. Uh, I request a one node, a course. Um, this also tells you where your job lands on. I'm on AC064, this compute node. And I created at uh, uh, this time, uh, 917. I still have two hours and 38 minutes. So um, even, after that, you will see uh, maybe a short waiting time, like uh, one minute, around one minute, you will see a blue button saying connect to Jupyter Lab. So if you click on Jupyter Lab, this will open the uh, Jupyter Lab. So you will see the interface like this one. But if you are not in the AI Tech Labs directory, you can find it, for example, I have here, AI Tech Labs, I download one hour ago, and uh, you can see all the files here. So if you double click on a file, this will open a, a, a file in the main working area. So uh, I will give a minute or two for you guys to uh, get here. If you have any questions, you can let us know. Hey Doc, how many core do you choose? <clears throat> I had number uh, of course. Uh, I can. Uh, yeah, recommended values is three, but uh, I think we have a maximum number, right? In the form, right. it is at sixteen. But yeah. I, I guess you can uh, because on the A thirty nodes we have uh, ninety six, but we only have uh, we have six A thirty GPUs. So for each people, the maximum they can get is sixteen. We we don't want you guys to like. Conf conflict with each other. So uh, you can choose less than that. Be for today's short course, uh, three is enough. Okay. You can use the recommended value on slides. Okay. And then the GPU is the first available GPU or are you asking for any? First okay. available GPU. Okay. Total memory and a, file. Mm -hmm. And the account would be empty, right? Email. Yeah, delivery. you can leave it a blank. Um, Email is also optional. If you uh, type in your email, you will receive the status of your job uh, uh, in the in your email. For example, it's queued, it's, it has been started, it's running, it's completed. Uh, but if you don't uh, want to receive these messages, you can just leave it blank. So we have seen these, you, you will be able to see the compute node, your job lands on. Um, 
So, uh, review. Uh, we have log, uh, log into ACES cluster through the HPRC access portal, uh, ACES portal access. And we have all, uh, we have copied the training materials, uh, to Scratch directory. And also, uh, we launched the Jupyter Lab app. So here in the, in the file browser, you will find, uh, in under AI tech labs, you will find a zero one underscore Jupyter Lab, uh, dot IPYNB, uh, Jupyter Notebook. Uh, you should follow the instructions in the Jupyter Notebook to import the required modules in for this short course to make sure they have been loaded properly. So I'll go to my uh, Jupyter Lab here. You can see th there is a file called a zero underscore Jupyter Lab. So for here, uh, we have already seen these. So we can just skip these and uh, there are some uh, cells. Uh, if you have used your Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab before, you know this is a code cell. So you can write your Python code into the code cell. And uh, this line starting with a hashtag, it's a comment. So uh, if uh, I, I run this code cell, you can use shift enter or control enter or you can use the run button at the top. But first you have to select the cell that you want to run and uh, and then click the run button. Uh, you can also use the, um, the shift to enter. So here we also want to try test the NumPy if NumPy is um, imported. So you can write these. If you don't, uh, don't have uh, much information about NumPy and uh, you can click uh, here to see the solution. Uh, of course, we strongly suggest you uh, 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 first do it by yourself and then see the solution. And also test the pandas uh, and also test the matplotlib, test the scikit-learn, test the PyTorch. We'll be using these Python uh, libraries for today's short course. I'll give you like uh, uh, two minutes to test this. Oh, there's another option actually. Um, because as you know, um, this environment was created by Camel HPRC for this short course specifically. But but in the future, you will work on your own project. You you don't necessarily use PyTorch. Probably you, uh, for example, you will be using TensorFlow. So you will need to customize your, uh, your own environment. So you can follow these steps, but not now, uh, this is optional. So if we have time at the end of this short course, we can do this. If not, we, you can practice that uh, after the, the, the class. So for example, you can create all these, uh, you can create a virtual environment and then you can activate and uh, you install the, modules that you needed for your own project. For example, maybe you don't need the PyTorch, you need a TensorFlow, you will kind of install TensorFlow into your virtual environment. And uh, after that, um, similar thing, you will need to load the Anaconda module you use the, to create the environment. And also you can put the name of your new environment to this uh, text box that will activate to your customized virtual environment. Um, so uh, I guess we will not have enough time for doing doing this because the installation will take a long time. It's around 10 to 15 minutes. So um, this is an option. If we have time at the end of this short course, we can, uh, we can, we can do this. If not, well, I strongly encourage you to do it after the class. Okay, next is about the data exploration. So, uh, for here, uh, data exploration, the first uh, Python library we want to uh, teach is the uh, called Pandas. It has two data structures that are descriptive and optimized for data with uh, different dimensions. The first uh, data structure is called series. It's 1D labeled array. Uh, the second one is called data frame. It's 2D labeled, uh, size mutable, like you can um, 
you can add columns, you can uh, delete, drop uh, rows or columns from the data frame. And uh, it's tabular structure. So it's looked like a table and, uh, and uh, for, and also it's a heterogeneously typed columns. It means like for each column, you can have integer columns or you can have a string column. So, um, so it can hold different types uh, of data. So. A series in pandas, it's one dimensional label array. It, it, it is capable of holding any data type, integers, strings, floating point numbers. Uh, one example is, uh, for example, time series stock price data. For example, this is a figure and uh, this is the index. For example, the index, we can customize the index to be data time, uh, date time. For example, we can put a, like uh, some data time and the value can be the stock price, right? This kind of like a time series stock price data. It's one dimensional. For data frame, um, data frame is a primary uh, pandas data structure that has been widely used. It's a dict like a container for series object. Um, why is called a dict like? Because it, uh, it's it's very uh, it's very similar to the Python dictionary. If you know uh, the Python dictionary data structure, you know it's a key value pairs, right? So you can retrieve the value by using the dictionary case. Um, here it's very similar for data frame. You can use the column names to retrieve uh, a column. Uh, after, for example, for here, series object, it means uh, when you retrieve a column from a data frame, the type, uh, is uh, the type is uh, a series, like it's 1D if you uh, retrieve a column. Um, it's two dimensional, size mutable, and uh, we have talked about this on the last slides. You can see we have uh, different types for each column. This is just a, a, an example. Um, we can have an integer, float, now floating number and the strings and even booleans. We can. So for pandas, uh, we will learn how to create a data frame, retrieve a row or column. We will learn how to drop entries. We will do selecting and filtering the data, sorting the data. And also we will uh, learn how to write, uh, write the data into a file and upload the uh, data in a file to uh, memory. So let's, um, let's go to the Jupyter Notebook. So this is the Jupyter Notebook, uh, 02 underscore DE data exploration underscore pandas. So we will first import the pandas again. Um, because they are in different notebook sessions, so we will have to import the pandas again, and also uh, we imported the series module. So it doesn't give you uh, give us any error. So it doesn't start from zero because I I think I run this uh, notebook before. If you want to start from zero, you can just restart the kernel and I will restart the kernel and clear all output. If I run the code cell now, it starts from one. Um, so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's it. So if you are curious about the number, um, I just run this code cell before the class. So that's why uh, it start from a non one uh, uh, number. And then how to create a ser pandas series. We can use a Python list. For example, I have a Python list here. You just put it in uh, in the parentheses of series, and uh, this will create the panda series. So you can see, actually, we have a label. This is the label column. This is the value. And also, we can. Oh, another feature for Jupyter Lab I want to introduce is the table of contents. If you click on the dot lines, triple dot lines here, you will see the outlines here. You can see we uh, that will be easier for you to navigate uh, on the Drupal. So you know where you are. 
Um, and of course, if you don't want to have it, you can just uh, close it. And uh, we can uh, retrieve the values. So it will tell you it's an array, these values, and we can use dot index to get to the index of the series. It will give you a range index, star zero, stop seven. Um, here, uh, we can, I want to show you that we can customize the index for the panda series. For example, we can use the index argument here. We give it a Python list. So this will, this index will uh, change the labels for the uh, the series. For for example, here now you you see it's not zero one two three four anymore. Now it's uh, A B C D E, right? So we can customize the uh, series index by using index. Um, you can use, but still you can use integer index, or you can use the label index. They are. Um, actually, they are doing the same thing. They just uh, retrieve the value. And if you want to try, do they equal? Uh, this tell you, yes, true. If you have any questions, you can let me know uh, or put it in the chat. And of course, we can retrieve values from a series. For example, I want to retrieve the values with the label A, C, B. It will retrieve these values and it, uh, with the labels as well. So you don't mess up with the uh, values. So A, uh, label A, at the label A, it has a value one, a label C, it has a value two. And also we can do filtering. For example, for this, uh, for this series, we have some positive numbers and negative numbers. We just want to filter the positive numbers. We can use this uh, uh, syntax, C sir underscore two square bracket. And also we put the sir underscore two greater than zero. So this will retrieve the, va uh, the values uh, that are greater than zero. So what does this sir underscore two greater than zero mean? It will give you actually a, an array of uh, true uh, Boolean variables, like a true, false, for example, at uh, the first location. Is it greater than zero? It's true. And, uh, but if at these two locations, the values are less than zero. So it put a false there. So uh, kind of this is a masking. So uh, we are using uh, these uh, Boolean variables to mask the 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 values in this uh, panda series. Okay, here there's an exercise. Um, of course, we have a solution, but uh, I want you. I strongly encourage you to work on this exercise by yourself, and uh, uh, to create a series for a month and uh, the number of uh, 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 days in the corresponding month in 2023. And also filter the month that have less than 31 days. Um, uh, you can you can you can try to write your code here. Uh, if you finish, you can compare answer to the solution. Um, I'll give you like uh, two minutes. Thank you. Um, welcome back, and uh, uh, hope you have worked uh, on this uh, uh, exercise. I know it's a lot of typing, or if you work on it, but. I prepare the solution there. That's why, uh, so it's easier. And so you can see for, uh, we use the series method and uh, we give it a Python list, which is the uh, list of number of days uh, for each month. And also we have an index, we customize the index to be the uh, January, to be the month names, January, February, March, and uh, like this. And, uh, um, and also for filtering, like less than 31 days, we just uh, use this syntax. We just use square bracket month underscore day less than 31. If I run this code cell, um, <clears throat> so you can see the uh, month that has number of days less than 31 will be displayed. So that's easy. Um, I think I added this one later, so 
you can just uh, try a print if you want to look at the series. But it's okay. Um, and then let's move on to data frame. I like to have the table con content expanded. Um, <clears throat> so uh, here, uh, we, need, uh, we want to import the data frame method. And also we use the NumPy here. So we import NumPy as MP. MP is the short name or alias for NumPy. Um, and then if we are ready, you can run this code cell. I use Shift Enter. So if you want to use Shift Enter, you can also do that. So here, the first um, um, thing is to create a data frame. And uh, you can see here actually, we have a, a Python dictionary. So you can see these curly brackets and uh, we have uh, colons. These are the key value pairs. So this is a Python dictionary. And uh, we just path uh, this Python dictionary into data frame method. We will be able to create a pandas data frame. So if I run this code out, you can see it's a tabular data structure, it's uh, look like a table. So, um, and also we can check the type of this data structure, right? So we use the type uh, keyword, we can type uh, parentheses df underscore one. Huh, it tells you it's a pandas data frame. So this is another exercise. I guess we don't have enough time. Uh, I know I put a lot of, uh, uh, if you you really type all these uh, into, but I, I think you can practice after the class as well. Um, so um, the good thing is that I prepare the solution here. So uh, if you want to run the code cell, you can copy and paste the, the code into the code cell. Um, so uh, let's see uh, the, the data frame it created. So you can see, um, it's a Python dictionary and uh, it has key value pairs. The values are Python lists. So it has the uh, values in the lists. And uh, and uh, after we created the Python dictionary, we use a uh, data frame to convert it to a Pinus, uh data frame and then we output it. So you can see it has been a nicely layout table. Um, yeah, for sure, you can you can practice all these <clears throat> um, after class. <clears throat> we don't have enough time to <clears throat> to practice everything. Um, so I will skip some of the exercises and uh, uh, because uh, we want to use the GPUs uh, in the deep learning session. So uh, I will skip uh, a few sessions uh, in the pandas and matplotlib and uh, so we can work on the deep learning. So let's, um, uh, if you have, this notebook is a pretty self-contained. If you understand the examples, you will, you should have no problem working on the exercises. So, um, <clears throat> so that's, uh, uh, this is a good for self-study as well. So uh, I will skip this, uh, retrieve a column, uh, Um, okay, I will just uh, run until here. For example, if you we skipped uh, some code cells, but this may affect our uh, variables. For example, you define the variable before this code cell, but you if you if you don't run that code cell, it will give you an error. Oh no, it's not defined. This variable is not defined. So how can we do that? It's a uh, we can run the code cell before, do we have that? Run all oh, about uh, selected cells. So it run all the cells before this code cell. So now if I run this code cell, I have this variable defined. So um, we can see if I want to retrieve a column, so for example, I have a state column. I can use the square bracket and put the column name as a string, like uh, uh, 
single codes uh, state, and uh, we will be able to retrieve the column. And also you can use the dot notation as well, dot state. It will give you the same result. Uh, we tried it year, population, and employment rate. So you can try this uh, after the class. And this is about how to retrieve a column in a data frame. For example, when you work on a machine learning project, you want to use some uh, specific columns. You can use uh, Pandas data frame to retrieve the column. How can we re retrieve a row? Here we use another method called iloc. Um, this is the data frame. For example, I want to iloc number three. So uh, you can use the iloc uh, print uh, square bracket three. So C 2024 MD 4.0, 4.9. So this will retrieve a row by using this method. And you can retrieve the first row, zero. Uh, and also we can change the uh, change the uh, the row labels. For example, here we have an integer indices zero, one, two, three, four. But if you want to change it to like row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, that's also uh, doable. You can just, just pass the Python list to uh, df underscore dot index. The index attribute, it will change uh, the index, the row index. And now you will be able to use another method called loc to retrieve rows. Because this loc method, it accepts labels. Um, so for example, I want to retrieve this row because it's I know this is row one and uh, you, can, you can directly retrieve it. You don't have to, uh, for example, uh, uh, if you have some meaningful row names, you can uh, you can retrieve by using the loc method. This here, i, it's now understandable, right? It's for integer location. Uh, it only accepts integer, um, but for the loc, it, uh, it can accept labels. So for, I think, um, I will skip the exercises. Um, um, this is very uh, interesting. Uh, uh, I think it's a very good practice. If you have time after the class, for example, retrieve the column of GDP billion dollars and save it in your variable GDP or and uh, also other uh, operations I ask you to do. Um, due to the time limit, I will skip the exercise. Um, Dropping entries, mainly we use this drop method. And uh, we can specify the uh, row names and we can specify access equals index. So it knows you want to drop the rows. For example, here we have this uh, data frame, df unders uh, underscore three. We can use the draw method to drop R1, row one and a row two. Uh, if you want to drop columns, that's also doable. You just need to put the column names and access to be columns. They will just drop the the columns as well. So, so you can see now the uh, data frame only has uh, two columns, and we don't have the employment and the population columns anymore. So. This is about dropping. Uh, I hope it's useful for your uh, research or project. Um, and here we also can do selecting, filtering uh, the data frame or slicing, if you call it. Uh, I still use this uh, data frame. Uh, we want to put it here so we know uh, what the data frame look like. And then, for example, I want to choose the uh, the rows that is uh, that has an employment rate an employment rate less than five percent. Um, this is uh, just tell you this column an employment rate column like true or false. So if this less than five, it's false. So these two 
rows less than uh five percent. So for row four, row five, they have boolean uh values of two. So when we apply this uh uh boolean uh, uh an array of uh, boolean uh variables to the data frame, we similar, very similar to panda series, right? We but we have to select the column that we want to apply the operations on. So here we said uh, DF underscore three, column unemployment less than five. And uh, and uh, then we apply this to the uh, data frame. So it will show you the rows that has unemployment rate less than 5%. And also you can do selecting like uh, for example, from zero to two, and uh, step size is one. Uh, but <clears throat> you you can see that this is the index integer index is zero. This is one. Uh, this end ending uh, number is not included. So, um, but also you can do two. Well, for example, if I just do, I didn't specify the ending number. It will do from the top, from the first row to the last row. If I do two, I just uh, skip uh, one row. Like for example, I start from the first row and I skip one row and then I get another row and skip a row. So this means like the um, the the index, of course, the <clears throat> integer index is zero two, four, so we get the even number um, index rows. <clears throat> of course, you can use the labels as well. Okay, uh, similar thing here. I do another filtering on this uh, uh, data frame, population greater than, for example, five million, and we can do the filtering. And also we can do sorting as well, um, here I create another data frame called df underscore one two. Uh, I use an, a numpy arrange function to generate 12 numbers. I reshape it to be three rows, four columns, and I give it an index of three, one, two columns called a C, A, B, D. I want, uh, I didn't give it an order because I want to sorting so we can so see the results. Uh, if you run this, you can see the, uh, data frame. If we sort by index um, and ascend, in ascending order, so it should be like a one, two, three, right? Uh, sort by index. Now you can see uh, your data frame has been sorted in increasing uh, ascending order, one, two, three. And also you can sort by values. You can specify the column that you want to um uh, sort by and uh here we want to buy sort the values by column d and you can just uh by equals uh square bracket d at a uh, in descending order so in the column d it will starting it will be starting with the largest number and then uh go smaller downward so um this is how we do sorting on data frame And also, a <clears throat> uh, very important thing is about the input and output. And uh, uh, we use pandas read CSV. Uh, and also, we have different methods, not only just the read underscore CSV. You can also use read Excel, read underscore XCL. You can put an Excel file here. And, uh, it can also um, load the data in the file to a data frame. Um, and also we have other methods for, for example, read underscore HTML. For example, if you find, uh, find a table on a web page, you want to, um, you want to, um, scrape the, uh, table from the web page and save it to a data, uh, data frame, you can you use read underscore HTML. Parentheses in the parentheses, you can put the URL of the 
web page and uh, this will grab the table and uh, um, and uh, save it into a data frame. So uh, that is also very uh, uh, very good. For example, if you don't want to uh, uh, just uh, uh, when you do some table, uh, you don't want to type the numbers in. You can just uh, use the pandas read HTML. Um, okay, uh, we have a, if you go to the files, click on the files icon, go back to our file browser, you can see we have some other files as well. We have a King County House Data CSV file. So if we use a pandas dot read CSV file, it will read the data in this file into a data frame called df underscore five. And uh, we want to look at the first 10 rows. So you can see it will show the first 10 rows. Um, uh, describe shows the <clears throat> statistical data, uh, like how many, the counts, the mean number, the standard deviation, the uh, maximum number, mean number, the different percentile values. So the describe will give you a general overview of your data. So this is very helpful too. Um, we find that uh, there's a, <clears throat> for example, we want to apply a filtering. Um, we found that uh, there's a, 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 a row that has 33 bedrooms. So that's a, that's very interesting. That's why I put it here. So if we do filtering, you can see you can directly find the, that row that has 33 bedrooms. I have never seen a house with 33 bedrooms. Um, but I think that's a typo because you can see it's a square, a living area. It's only like 1600 square uh, square feet. Uh, but it, uh, I guess it's a three, but it's a typo, but we can still do some exploration of the data, right? So by using the filtering, uh, sorting or stuff. Um, now we have the data in DF underscore three. If you want to save it for future use, for example, I want to save it to a CSV file. And uh, when I um, want to use it, uh, so when you, like it doesn't last when you turn off your computer and uh, it lost from the memory, but uh, you can save it in uh, into a file uh, and uh, you can use it for later. So we give it a name called a data underscore corp copy dot CSV. And uh, I don't want the row index, the header. If you want them, you can put them as true. And uh, if I run this code cell, you can see there will be a new file uh, called data underscore copy dot CSV like a few seconds ago, um, it will save the, save all these data uh, into a new file. You can load it back later. Okay, uh, I also have some advanced uh, uh, panels as well, but I put it as optional. It's about like handling missing data, duplicate data and merging data. And uh, so if you have uh, time after this short course, you can uh, work on this. And the next one is our data exploration map plot So um, we will look at some plotting methods. Uh, first, first thing first, we need to import our module called mapplotlib.pyplot as PLT. I also uh, import NumPy. Um, so you can see I didn't put an S and P. So it's it's optional. If you want to type type out the NumPy, you can you can just uh, uh, you don't have to do that. It's optional. So uh, if you run this code cell, uh, it'll give you a number here. So because I run this code cell before the class, so it doesn't start from zero. If you want to see, uh, it doesn't from that doesn't start from one. If you want to see the number one, you can always restart kernel, and choose restart. And if I I want to click all the outputs, and uh, then if I run this code cell again, it will start from number one. Um, and here 
uh, we want to learn how to generate, create a line plot, scatter plot, a subplot, subplot, and uh, some color maps. So, first thing for uh, first, we we have to have data to plot. So, I use NumPy dot space to generate some data. So. And also y equals x to the power two. Um, of course, you can print out these uh, these uh, data. Uh, these data. So it's from the length space create like zero to five ten numbers, um, and a y uh, is x squared. So you can see the last number is five, right? So squared it is twenty five. So we have the data. Um, this is very easy, simple data, but it's uh, good for uh, demonstrating how to plot figures using uh, Matplotlib. So here I first plot some scatter plot, X and Y, X and a negative Y, you can see. And of course, we have some other arguments as well. We can specify the because we are doing mark a scatter plot, we have to uh, we will need to specify the size and uh, the color and uh, what type of marker you want to use for the plot. Um, so if we run this code cell, you can see mm, we have this scatter plot, uh, and we give the title mean a title name the title and x label x dash label. Y label dash Y label. Um, okay, exercise. Um, I guess we, uh, this is very similar, but I just ask you to change the title X label, Y label to be some, some other uh, name, label names, for example, side length, area, I think it's a, uh, um, very easy because when we do a figure, we would like to uh uh we would like the the labels to be meaningful. Uh, so let let's just skip this uh, exercise. <clears throat> if you want to work on it, we have the uh, after class. We also have the solution. You can work uh you can work on it at your own pace. So and a line plot. Similarly, we do not use the scatter method now. We just use plot dot plot. So we can specify the uh, first. We need to give the data, pass the data, and the color. Uh, I want to use a red line. Line style is dot. It's dotted line. You can also specify the line width for some two. Um, I also commented a few lines. That is. Um, for example, for the line style, you can you you can even specify some numbers to change the um the pattern of the line. For example, how far each dot of it is and how wide is the dot. Um, so first, let's uh show this one. So it's a dotted line. If I comment this line, and uh, if I want to do the third line. So it's also a red line, but the line style is different. Also, it has a wider line width. So it's right. So it will give you a different line pattern. Uh, these numbers you can, I think Matt Polyb has some documentation about what uh, these numbers these numbers mean. You can check that as well. Search line style. Uh, okay, uh, I provided solutions to this one um subplot let's uh let's do some uh um uh, plot like in vertical uh, direction for example if you want to put uh, some figures uh together and uh, uh you can use subplot for example if i want to put uh, some Data they can be uh they can have a good comparison in vertical direction. You can uh <clears throat> use the subplot method. You can specify the row number and a column number. I have two rows, one column. So 
uh, the subplots will be stacked in vertical direction. Um, I give it a title. It's called a subtitle, subplots in vertical direction. And also we specify the similarly uh, to the, uh, but you can see actually when we do the, do the access, now it's an array, right? So because we have two subplots, the first subplots will have an index zero. The second subplots will have an index one. So we will be using uh, access zero, uh, access one to, to indicate the two subplots. In the first subplots, I will use the data x, y. In the second subplot, I will use data x, negative y. So let's run this. So now you can see how it looks like. Similarly for the <clears throat> horizontal uh, subplots, we can, for example, one row, two columns. So the subplots is actually in a row. Um, uh, the index you can see zero and one. So we can uh, arrange the subplot in different directions. We can also do two directions. We have two row, two columns. So we have four subplots. But now uh, when you see the the axis, the meaning the subplots, because each subplot has one x, y, x, x axis, y axis. So we it, it will return a two-dimensional array. So um, zero, zero means the first subplot. Zero, one means the uh, the subplot uh, in that in that in the first row, but it's the second. And uh, also you will need to use the other uh, arrays to indicate other subplots. So the last plots will be one, one, right? So um, I specify the, uh, the data and the color and also even set the title. So we can see that. Now you can see the first subplot, it has um, this array like zero, zero, the second one has zero one, one zero one one. So you can do plots in two directions. Uh, these are something that is make the label layout nicer, like just a label outside. Um, and also you can use the figure.cfig uh, method to save this subplot. For example, you can specify the um, dot per inch. Uh, for example, when you write a paper, you we all have to the the journal or the conference paper may have some resolution requirement. You can specify the resolution here. Um, this is a six uh, six hundred. Uh, if we go back to the file browser, you will be able to see the subplot dot gpack here. So it has been saved. Uh, into this directory. Any questions about these uh, subplots? Okay, if no questions, we can continue for color maps. Maybe some, some students are interested in color maps. So first, First thing first, we will need to generate some data for demonstration. Here, um, I used a function called a flux cubic potential. Uh, it has a function and uh, we can generate the data from this function. Um, I, I, I want to explain this uh, function. So we just uh, use the define keyword to, uh, to define a Python function. And then we use NumPy lens space to generate some data. This is a 1D NumPy array. Here we use mesh grid to combine the arrays into 2D grid. So you can imagine you have a 2D uh, and uh, it has a grid points uh, with, the, uh, with the values. And then we can pass, use, uh, use the flux qubit potential function to assign a value to each point in the grid. So we can calculate uh, the flux qubit potential for each grid point. 
and also we do a transpose here. Uh, now we have our data ready. For 2D plots, actually, we have different methods. We can have a P color, image show, or contour map. Uh, here, uh, first to show the P color, you pass in the data, and also these other uh, the color skills. Uh, you can set up, set the color skills. Um, and also specify the color bar as well. So let's, let's see what it, does it look like. Um, you can see the, <clears throat> the, the 2D map for the flask qubit potential. Uh, I guess this has the uh, highest potential and this is, has the lowest potential. So this is a 2D map using map all uh, This is by P color method. And also you can use image show, it's very similar. Um, so, so this is uh, from the image show. And uh, for these arguments, uh, you can uh, check or you can search online, for example, image show, or V mean, V max. What does it, what does it mean? How 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 can you set the 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 these arguments? You can uh, work. Uh, you can research this later. And also, we can do contour map. Contour. How how many of you know about contour lines? Um, give me a thumbs th thumbs up if you know about contour lines. Great. Someone knows about contour lines. I um I learned geology before, and I know the contour lines. Like you have mountains and val valleys, and the contour lines means the same elevation on the uh, for like mountains. You have some same elevation. Um. So this is a similar, very similar. The contour lines, uh, it has the same flask cubic potential along this line. So this is another representation of the data. So uh, we, have, we have introduced these three different methods. You can choose any one uh, that can represent your data the, the, the best. So, and also for, we can do 3D figures as well. Uh, first, have you all, we need to uh, import to do 3D figures. We have uh, we will need to import the access 3D. So you can see we have some figure. Uh, we set the figure size. Um, we added two subplots here, so it's a one uh, one row, two columns. So it's uh, the two two plots subplots will be st stacked horizontally. And we specify the projection to be 3D. Uh, this is the flux qubit potential data. Um, R stride, column stride. Uh, let's show the figure. You can see um, they are in horizontal direction. And you can see there are some lines on the, on the surface. So this R stride and uh, uh, column stride uh, R stride and C stride actually define the these lines on the surface. So this is also from the from the same flux qubit potential data. So you can see you can use a different method to represent your data, and also even wireframe data a plot. So th we use this method. Uh, here I just want to show you the different ways to represent the same set of data. Um, hope it can give you some uh, ideas when you have some data, you can remember some of these methods, plotting methods, and uh, can give you a better representation of the data. This is a, uh, a projections, for example, the two sides views and uh, top view for the same data. So, um, this is about the map polyp. I think it's uh um it's very interesting and uh uh I always when I have a set of data when I want to do uh, some figures I always think which plotting method can give me uh the best representation of the data. So um okay the next one is uh, about map polyp. Um 
machine learning with scikit-learn. So uh, machine learning is, uh, <clears throat> is a subfield, subfield of uh, artificial intelligence that uh, focus on the development of uh, algorithms or models um, uh, that can learn and improve from the data, right? So you don't have to explicitly program um, to perform some task. It will learn from the data and getting better uh, from the data. Um, here in machine learning, actually, we have different uh, techniques, for example, regression, classification, clustering. Here we have dimensionality reduction. Um, there are different tasks. So um, uh, I think for scikit-learn website, they do a great job uh, in introducing the different machine learning tasks. You can find these um, different tasks. For example, for classification, uh, your task is to identify category of an object. It even tells you the applications, for example, spam detection, for example, you classify email to be sp spam or non-spam. And also it tell, even tells you some machine learning algorithms that can perform classification tasks, SVM, uh, nearest neighbors, and uh, and so on. So scikit-learn website is a, is a good uh, starting point to learn uh, machine learning if you if you are a beginner. Um, I will not read all these uh, out so uh, you can you can uh, check their website. So let's go to our notebook. So here um, we will need to import the scikit-learn. Um, it's called ASCII-learn here now. Um, in the module name is called ASCII Learn. So ASCII Learn, I want to uh, dot linear model. I want to do some linear regression. So from scikit Learn linear model, in, linear model import the linear regression. So if we run this code cell again, you can see it's a uh, number uh, doesn't start with number one. I'll just restart the kernel and clear the output. And if now I run the code cell, it, it starts with number one. For linear regression, actually, we are trying to find the a relationship between the variables, for example, x and y. Um, here we generate some data points, x and y. And also we add some random noise to y. So you can see y is actually 3x plus 2. But we all uh we we added some random noise, so the 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 data points won't be exactly on the line. So if we do this, you can see we have the line. If you want to do scatter, we we'll just learn about the plotting map so you can see the data points. If you use a scatter, if you use a plot, it will give you a line plot, right? So, um. Of course, you can study the shape of your x, your data y. Um, you can see it's a 20 rows, one column. Y is also 20 rows, one column. And we can create, uh, because we already import the linear regression model, and we can create an instance of it. And we can uh, call it a model, or you can call it anything you want, for example, a uh, regressor or something like that. Um, and we create an instance of the linear regression model. And uh, we use fit method uh, to train the model by using the X and Y data. So this is how it works. So how we do training of the model. After training, the model will learn uh, the knowledge it learns is actually the coefficient and the uh, intercept of these the lines, right? Because in linear regression, we're trying to fit a line to the dat data points. So when we um, train the model with these data points, it will learn and get the coefficient and the intercept of the line. So let's see 
the coefficient of the line and uh, the intercept of the line. Um, and also we can uh, print out the score, how good this model is. It's about uh, like 97.9%. That's uh, pretty good. Um, and also we can do prediction for uh, uh, for each data, data point X and uh, we can plot uh, the X, Y, and also we can plot the predicted Y. So let's see how they uh, match each other. So you can see this is the original data points, data points, and this is the uh, predicted line. So the best fit line. So. It's very close, right? We have the y equals 3x plus 2. Now it's a y equals 2.99, x plus 2.0 something. Of course, we add some random noise to the data points. Um, and all, of course, uh, we can do polynomial feeding. Um, you can uh, look at the polynomial feeding after the class. Uh, for example, if you have some data points like this, uh, you may feel like, oh, we could use a polynomial feeding to feed the data. If we just use a, uh, just use a, a straight line, that will be not very good. Yes, we can do polynomial feeding to the data points as well. Uh, you, can, you can look at the code. So next is about uh, after regression, uh, we will, learn about the classification. Uh, classification, uh, it has many algorithms that can do classification tasks. Here we uh, give a support of rectal machines. And uh, um, if you're interested in knowing about the uh, theory and uh, mechanism about the support of rectal machines, you are uh, welcome to search uh, about the machine, uh, about the support of rectal machines. So you, uh, so here, we need to create some data points uh, to, to, to um, distinguish between the two classes. Uh, here, I first uh, do two centers. So I will generate some data points um, like, like these two uh, clusters, two groups of data points. You can see some purple data points, yellow data points. I want to do a classification between these two um between these two classes so how can we do that so we will import the from scikit-learn svm import the svc the supporter vector uh vector classifier uh it also um here i specify a linear kernel you can also specify other kernels as well, for example, polynomial kernel or other kernel. Um, but I uh, here we just use a linear kernel for uh, here. So after that, we create a, an instance of the SVC model called a CLF. It's short for classification, right? CLF. And then we uh, use the fit method to train the model with the, the data X and Y. Here's our data. So we want to do a classification. And then we, here after the model is trained, we retrieve some of uh, its coefficient to plot the, the line that, uh, that separate the two, class, two classes. So I will skip. So you can see here we plot a line. This line needs a um, slope and a intercept. So uh, this is about how to get the slope and the intercept. Uh, so we will plot this line and this line separate the two uh, classes, two clusters. So whenever you have another data point you want to do a classification, for example, your you have a new data point here, and you use this model to predict 
uh, the model will predict, okay, this is a purple class. Um, and also for other classification algorithms, we also have KN, key nearest neighbor algorithms. It's uh, another uh, classification algorithm. It, it's very similar. Here I give an example, uh, do multiple, uh, do multi-class classification. So you can see here I have centers four. So this will generate like four uh, clusters of data points. So uh, when we train the model, it's very similar. Like you create an instance of the KN model and you specify the number of uh, neighbors and a weight to be uniform or you want to do assign different weights. Uh, and then again, we will use the fit method to train our model KNN with the uh, X and Y, but our data is now all um, are these. After you train a model, you your KNN model has learned from all these data. So if I give it a new data point of one six, one six is about here. So we can check the classification results uh, and plot it. So you can see um, it gives a, a class class number a zero. And also I plot the color. So you can see the new data point is uh, is green. So it's closer to this uh, uh, cluster. So it has been classified as uh, uh, green or number zero. Okay, uh, the third machine learning technique is called clustering. Clustering is the dividing, is about the dividing data points into different groups. So in each group, like um, the data points are more similar to each other than uh, the data points in other groups. So this is about clustering. Um, we also have different algorithms for clustering. Here uh, we give an example about key means. Do you feel like it's very similar? Um, so we can create uh, the key means, uh, create a, uh, we use a key means method we specify the number of clusters four, and then we use the fit method again to train the model uh, with the data X. After that, we can uh, output the cluster centers, also called a centroids uh, out. So this is a method to do the clustering task. So you can see these are the the cluster centers, the coordinates of the cluster center, uh, centers or centroids. And uh, we can plot the original data. These are the original data. Um, next, we will plot our results from the clustering. So you can see it says all these data points belong to one group. And also we plot the coordinates of the cluster centers. So you can see, do we have some mis, uh, wrong prediction? Uh, I guess here, probably this data point, it's a purple here in our prediction. Uh, but it's green, it belongs to this cluster in the original data. So there are some uh, mispredictions, but also, but uh, overall, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a prediction is pretty good if you compare these two, uh, two results. Like the this is the prediction, this is the original. Okay, uh, I also have some additional materials for, uh, principal component analysis, uh, for like dimensionality reduction, um. You can you can look at these uh, um, uh, after the class. So next is about Py PyTorch deep learning. So um, we have um, 
we know that we have uh, these concepts have been popular in the artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. Um, some of people don't quite understand their relationship. So um, uh, I show a figure here, a diagram here, and you can see the artificial intelligence is the biggest concept. Like it, it is anything about man-made intelligence exhibited by machines. So uh, machine learning is a smaller concept. It means like um, it's an approach to achieve AI. Uh, you will, um, it focuses on the development of uh, like the machine learning models to perform some task and also, um, and uh, the algorithm learns and improves from the data by itself. It's uh, you don't have to program, uh, uh, program explicitly program it. Um, it learns from the data. So for deep learning, it's a, it's a, a technique to implement machine learning. It's a deep here means multiple layers of neural networks. So, um, so you can build a neural network like has many layers of a new network. So, uh, this is the, the relationship of these uh, three concepts. Um, I just want to show it here. And also types of machine learning algorithms. If you have, uh, uh, I believe some of you guys have heard about the supervised learning and supervised learning, re reinforcement learning, even between the supervised learning and unsupervised learning, we have a semi-supervised uh, learning. So uh, what we just did uh, uh, for the regression, the regression is a type of supervised learning. Classification is also a type of supervised learning. For clustering, like dividing the data points into groups, it's unsupervised learning because we uh, trained the model with unlabeled data. Reinforcement learning is uh, another type of learning that uh, kind of like focus on training an agent uh, to in an environment to to make decisions or uh, a, for example, a sequences of decisions and to accumulate the uh, rewards uh, to maximize the rewards. So it has no training data. It's a, a stochastic stochastic Markov decision process and uh, robotics and business strategy planning can be reinforcement learning. Uh, this is about the machine learning, the difference between machine learning and a traditional uh, modeling. So in traditional modeling, we have data, we have model, for example, uh, in, in some uh, kind of like, for example, uh, I did a geomechanics before and uh, I want to simulate um, like the, um, the ground motion. And uh, I can, I have a governing equation for, uh, of course, and then, I use uh, discretize the domain with the finite element method. And then I have some boundary condition, initial condition, and then we discretize it using some numerical method. And then we kind of program it and then into the computer. And then we make predictions at some other new location, how the ground motion will be. Um, that's, that is a, a one type of traditional modeling, but for machine learning, it's kind of a different, uh, a different. So we have sample data, and we know the expected output. For example, you have some images of cats and dogs, and we know these uh, images, and also we know the labels cats and dogs. We use some model, like we we know some classification model, and then we train the model with these uh, sample data and expected output, and the model get trained, and then we have some new images or new data we can we can let the model make predictions. So uh, this is kind of a different um, workflow and uh, between the traditional modeling and machine learning. Um, I'll skip this. And also there are some very good um, uh, visualization about the convolutional neural network. This is one here. This is a very, I think it's a Linnet. Uh, so you can see how, um, each convolution, convolution layer or pooling layer look like uh, 
for this uh, classification. For example, this is uh, amnesty classification and uh, you give it number, it will make predictions. But now you can see for each layer um, look like. So this is uh, the URL is here. Um, and also for another CNN uh, visualization, you can, this is another URL here. You can click on the each, uh, each channel and you will see how it was computed. And uh, you will be able to see, oh, there's a convolutional filter and uh, it uh, the bias and uh, all these things. And then it will tell you how it was get. And uh, this is kind of like a uh, very good visualization. So I want to introduce this to you guys as well. Okay, I think this is the last uh, slide. Um, so now we can look at the deep learning uh, Drupal notebook. Um, so first thing first, we will need to import, because we are using the PyTorch framework, we will need to import Torch, Torch NN, Torch Optimizer, uh, Torch Vision for the data set, Transforms for the data set as well. <clears throat> and also we will try to measure the time, measure the training time, because we are trying to train a uh, image classification model uh, in this notebook. So we want to measure how long it takes to train the model. So we import the time module as well. Okay, um, I'll just restart the kernel and uh, clear up and I'll import it again. So we want to use a GPU, right? Because we know that GPU can accelerate your workflow um, by a large amount compared to CPU. So that's why we have uh, uh, different types of GPUs to uh, to satisfy the needs for different users or researchers on uh, ACES cluster. So for today, we are gonna use the NVIDIA H100 and A30 GPUs. First, we will need to check if a GPU is available and set the device accordingly. For example, here, we will use Torch device. If uh, a CUDA, is available, meaning a GPU is available. We will uh, see it's a CUDA uh, colon zero. So it's the index of the GPU devices. Otherwise we will see, oh, it's CPU. We will just use the CPU. But for now, if you run this code cell, we will get a CUDA zero. So meaning that we get a GPU device. So uh, can you type, uh, can you, if you get this uh, GPU device, can you, copy these into the chat line, into the message box. Uh, so I, I know that you get a GPU. Can you copy these into the chat? Or did you get a CPU? Okay, somebody get a, a GPU, that's great. Uh, do you need a time to run this code cell or did you get an error to run this uh, code cell? Okay. we. Yeah, great. We get some GPUs. And uh, even you can, if you click this plus sign, the blue button here, I got, uh, you can open a terminal. It tells you which compute node you are on now. And if you use the watch command, watch NVIDIA dash SMI, you can see the the GPUs you are uh, uh, on your compute node. For example, I'm on a compute node with NVIDIA A30 GPUs. Did someone get a H100? If you do like this, I'm on a A30 node. Do we have some people on a H100 node? If you if you get a H100, can you can you Type H100 in the chat. Or A30, if you got an A30, you can also type the A30 in the chat as well. Okay, we have somebody got a H100, so that's nice. Great. Okay, if you need time, never seen one before. 
So, uh, Paul, oh, okay, H100, that is. Okay, great. You got a H100. And, uh, okay, let, uh, let me go back to the colon notebook. So, we have uh, H100 and uh, A30 GPUs. Now, we um, will define the new network. For example, we uh, build a very simple uh, convolutional neural network. And uh, we have calm layers, polling layers, calm layers, and fully connected layers. And we have 10 here because it's uh, for image uh, amnest uh, classification. So it has 10 classes. So this will be 10. And also we have forward, uh, forward pass, and we use ReLU function, activation function. So uh, we will run this code cell to define the neural network. And uh, you can see here, I put net equals net to device. So we will move the move the network model to the GPU if you got one. So if you have a H100, it will move to the H100. If you have a A30 GPU, it will be moved to A30 GPU. So we can do that. And also we have uh, defined the loss function um, using cross entropy loss. And also we have the op optimizer. We use the STD optimizer. So, and also transforms. Um, now we will need to uh, use heart vision to get the MNIST data. So if we run this code cell, okay, I think the data is already in my, Okay, because I run this no notebook before the class, so I already download the data. So has does anyone see some uh text here below this code cell seeing like downloading data, something like that? Yes, okay, great. You are downloading the data and uh my data is existing in the directory now, so it doesn't give me the information. And um now we can start the training. So we start the timer for measuring the training uh, by calling the time module. And uh, I we train the model in 10 epochs, loop over the data set 10 times. Or if you want to train a different number of uh, uh, times, uh, you can change this number. So this is about the training. So we get the data from the train loader. We get the inputs and the labels. And also we move the inputs and labels to the GPU device. And I'll, I'll we first uh, uh, do the zero gradient for the optimizer. And uh, we do the forward passing uh, network and the loss, loss backward. And then we update the gradients. Um, we output the epochs, the loss and, uh, and the loss. So at the end, we will we will get the training time by subtracting the end time from the start time. So we will get how long does it take to train the model. So let's run this code cell. Hmm. Okay, this is on this training is on A30 GPUs. So let's let's see how long does it take uh, to train the model. Uh, somebody uh, is on the H100. Let's compare. Um, the training time for A30 and H100 GPUs. How do you check which model you are using? Oh, you mean the the GPUs? Uh, the if you are meaning the yes, the GPU. Um, you can open a terminal. Uh, can you see my cursor uh, hovering over the plus sign, the button? Okay, uh, we have somebody, uh, 99 said A30 took about 50 seconds. If you click on the plus sign, you get uh, this launch page and you can click on the terminal. And uh, if you use the command watch NVIDIA, dash SMI, you will be able to see the 
GPU type. For example, here I have NVIDIA A30. Okay, great. Um, for this one, okay, my A30, uh, it's about 51 seconds. It's very closer. It's very close to Nan and Shen's result. How about uh, the people who use the H100? What is your training time? Can you type your training time in the in the chat? So we can do a comparison. Okay, if I rerun the training, we can even look at the uh, NVIDIA SMI utility. You can see it's uh, using the GPU. So because it's a very small model, uh, it use uh, a small amount of memory and a uh, small amount of uh, the GPU utilization is also very small. It's a 13%. So you can see uh, you are using the GPU. Okay, H100, we have some H100 result, 49 seconds. So H100 is, uh, yeah, beat the A30, I guess, in this task. Okay, it's training. Okay. Oh, now I get a 50 seconds. Okay. After you train the model, you want to save the uh the, the training model, like the weights. So we use torch.save and uh we give it a name called amnesnet.pth. So after you run this, you should uh be able to see, oh, I, I have saved the train model in this file. And uh when you want to use it next time, you can load it back. Use the uh, net dot load state dict, and uh, so you can do some evaluation or run uh, some other jobs. So now we can do the eval, and also we can download some test data to 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 check the train model how good it is. Uh, what is the accuracy? So. Around these, so he says, okay, your accuracy, your model accuracy on the test data set is ninety eight point eight percent. Um, okay, that's um, that's all the, that's all for the for this uh, AI ML tech labs, and uh, I know it's uh, pretty fast, and uh, we don't have enough time. Uh, for for uh, to go over every examples and uh, exercises, but I want to leave it leave them to you guys. If you are interested, you can work on the exercise after the class. Um, and also, you know how to use the. This is a basic example for using the accelerators on our ACES cluster. If you have your own project, uh, you are welcome to um to try out try out our accelerators. Um, and also, if you have any questions, um, uh, we have our contact information on the presentation slide, help at hprc.tmu.edu. Uh, we, we can receive, uh, we will receive your email with your questions, we can help you. And also even on the last slide, we have uh, our HPRC help desk email, we have the help desk phone number, uh, this is our uh, uh, web page. If you have any questions, you can ask us. Um, I will stop here. If you have any questions, you can let me know. Thank you for you uh, attending this short course, AI ML Tech Lab.